Okay. I'm really honoured now to introduce to you my, my new friend. I think I'm brave enough to call him my new friend. Uh, I met Dave on a WhatsApp group, like you do. Uh, had a little Google around. Oh, he's, he sounds interesting. Do you fancy a chat, Dave? And he went, yeah, sure. And we had a really good conversation. And I was like, I was like this. I was listening to this man. Um, and at the end, I said, do you fancy presenting to our lot, you know, Collaboration Global? And he said, I love what you're doing. He said, I've got a really busy schedule. Let me see what I can do. And we did have to plan months in advance for this. So this has been on his agenda for literally, I don't know, four or five months, if not longer. And he still said yes, and he didn't change his mind, and he didn't have something more important that popped in. He said yes, and he kept to it, which was awesome. And in the meantime, he's been voted Best International Public Speaker and MC 2023. He's got a wonderful award. He's brand new 2023, and he's already won an award. Fantastic. These are some of his credentials, hopefully to get you excited. He's got so much. Did you see the video that was out there that we put out there? He's got so many big friends in the world that you're kind of like, well, why is he talking to us? I have to ask you that question, Dave. Why are you talking to us? I feel so um, pleased that your heart felt open enough to be able to come and support this community of people that are here every single month to support each other. I really thank you for that. And now I'm going to hand over to you uh, to have your next 20 minutes to share your genius with us today. Thank you so much. What a wonderful introduction. I, I, I'm going to disappoint everybody now by not being very good, but uh, it's an honor to be here. And I want to share with you as much as possible. You said to me before, it's me 20 to 30 minutes. Which one is it before I start? Are you going to pull like a big hook and pull me off in the middle of it? Or yeah, okay, so I'll look forward to that. So I might as well get straight into it. So my name is Dave Crane. If you're wondering who I am, this is what I do. <laughs> Dave, can you share your sound? Because we're not hearing that, my love. Well, the sound isn't coming through, but it was a very nice video. <laughs> I was checking that earlier and it did come through. So we'll just we'll just assume that it was fine. Oh. Um, but that is kind of what I do. So if you Google it, it's there. What I want to share with you doesn't need to have lots of shiny objects and things going on. It's really about helping you to get to where you want to be. So as you've worked out, that's me, that's Dave Crane. And I'm all about building up legacies. I'm from the UK, from Middlesbrough. Um, and uh, my background was very simple. I was with the BBC for a number of years, couldn't get a full-time job, tried to say, look, this is me, I can really help. And nothing happened. Let me, if, you, if you're a middle child and you're trying to get the attention of your parents and they're just not looking towards you, kind of thing. So, um, for that, I ended up leaving and going to Dubai, looking for a new place to go. And one blind date had worked on BBC, had done lots of things, and I just couldn't get that big break I was looking for. I arrived in Dubai, and uh, that was my big opportunity to just start in a place that was open to whatever you could arrive and do. And so the big difference for me in Dubai is when you arrive off a plane and you say, this is what I do, they go, go on then. But don't say, I bet you can't. And I, I ran with that. And my message really is very much about how to jump and grow wings on the way down. Um, so with that, I mean, I won't take questions just now, but I'm happy to ask quest uh, answer questions after I've gone through the presentation. Let me start off by giving you this. This is a free gift to everybody uh, in the room. If you want to pull your phone up and get a copy of this QR code or do a screenshot and go back to it later, you can do a screenshot. And uh, on your phone, if you press it, it opens up. There's a free gift for you which is 10 um, strategies to be able to fast track your career, whether you're running your own business or you're looking to, to, to move up the food chain faster, which includes growing your brand, uh, dominating on LinkedIn, um, opening up a speaking career, getting over imposter syndrome, a ton of stuff that I'll be mentioning in, in more general terms here. It's got very straight to the ball, get it done strategies, which I think will be useful for everybody. So feel free to take a shot of that. Uh, and register and download. Okay, so with that being said, let's move on to what I want to share with you. You might already know it, but there's an AI tsunami, uh, and people were talking about it happening when it opened up maybe four months ago with ChatGPT, and uh, unless you are actually in a cave with no internet, uh, or even in a stationary cupboard, then you're probably wondering, well, how does that relate to me? What's all the big deal? But it is a big deal. It's massive. It's a tsunami, and I warned people about a tsunami many years ago. 
And I warned them that the, the big tsunami was going to be that as we get, if you don't get more digitized, then you're going to realize that you're playing outside of the game and you won't be able to catch up. Well, if you didn't get digitized then, you didn't start growing your brand then, then it's going to be even harder now because the whole industry worldwide, everything has been knocked on its head. So this presentation is a, a shorter version of my normal unstoppable keynote. Uh, and I'm going to choose some good bits to share with you uh, on how to get from imposter syndrome to becoming an industry icon. First lesson is this, always ask better questions. As Joe was saying at the very beginning of it, life is all about asking questions of yourself and of people and uh, constantly doing that. If you clarify and re-clarify the question, the AI that's in your head will work out a better way and a better strategy of making things happen. So you don't have to spend so long thinking, oh my goodness, just re-evaluate exactly what it is that you're asking. So amongst the questions, here's a good one to start with. What does society value most? Because if you're going to avoid a tsunami, you really need to know what that tsunami is going to wipe out and what you need to do to be valued. And here's the factor. The status game, which has been around for many thousands of years, is driven by three basic things. Society, and it doesn't matter what nationality, take you back thousands of years, hundreds of years, anywhere, it's the same stuff. Your dominance in your chosen field, your success that proves you're the best at doing it, and your virtue as an expert that proves that you are really into it and you know more about it than many other people and you live and breathe what it is you're talking about. In order to do this effectively, so for instance, dominance might be Lionel Messi, by far, uh, unless you're a Ronaldo fan, or maybe a Harry Kane, I don't know, it's up to you. Um, best footballer on the planet for many years. Then you got success, which is like an Elon Musk. You know, the guy makes tons of money, creates great things, there you go. But you got virtue, which is like uh, the Pope or, or um, Michelle Obama. So they, what they say is true, and what they do is exactly true to that. Now, very few people have all three. When you do get all three, then you are positioned to become an industry icon. I'll explain more about that later, but let's look at what you can do to make sure that people know that that is true about you. You don't have to be, I am great with a dominance. You just have to be good at what you do and warm and welcoming to people who are wanting to know how they can get some or how they can work with you. You show your expertise in every interaction that you have with people and you be sincere. Tell people what you truly believe and be happy to say I was wrong at the same time. And let's ask this question, and this is probably the, the biggest question that you should always think about in your relationships, in your business, in anything. If you're, if you're married, you've got kids, or you've got dogs, or you've got clients, what's in it for them, not what's in it for you? You don't, and rightly, you don't care who I am. You're here because you want to know what I can share with you. And I get that, and so that puts the onus on me. But if I do deliver stuff to you that's really good, then you want to connect with me better. And that's business. Most people don't do that. They just go ego, ego, ego. And then you've got to work out if you know what's in it for them, who are they? Who is your target avatar? Who's your target client? And what is it that you sell to them that they're going to want? Because it might be a ton of things that you do, but they might not want it all. So the way to work that out is very simple. What you sell is not your job description. You, I mean, everybody on this call does different things. What you sell is the certainty that when you connect with me, I will deliver. And your entire job is to prove that that is true when you meet new clients and constantly on an ongoing basis. So they never have a reason to not be working with you. Don't spend time saying I can do this and I can do that and all the rest of it. But you really don't care. When I've got a plumber that comes around to fix my house, if I've got like a leak or something, I don't need to like the guy. When people say about liking, trusting somebody, I don't need to like him. I just need to trust him that he will do the job so I can leave him alone and then I'll call him again next time. So with that being said, here's what clients truly want. I'll make myself slightly smaller into a circle so you can see this better. This is a buying process if you haven't come across it. And if you want to take screenshots of any of this, feel free, by the way, it's, it's my gift to you. So first of all, clients are thinking, right, um, what's my headache? What's my big challenge? Remember saying, well, who can fix it? That person can, that person can. There's lots of people, I can Google it. But who's the best fit for this challenge? And after I've worked with them, will my headache be gone? And once you've got that person, then you always ask, can I get it cheaper than them? If the answer is no, then you're sold. So your job is to work out certainty and proof, social proof, then the niche of what you represent, 
what people can do to trust you, which is usually testimonials and proven subjects and proven projects, your clients' objectives, what they actually want from you, then you need to sell it and then prove that as a return on investment. They get more out of it working with you than anybody else. And that positions you as the best choice. So how do you survive? First thing, when you got all this big challenges and changes and recessions and politicians who don't really listen very much in every country, maybe not so much in Dubai because they never listened anyway, but they do their own thing. What you do is you work out your personal brand, become an industry icon, position yourself as the best at what you do and let people know you are the best at what you do. So what does that mean? What's an industry icon? What sort of challenges for them? Okay. Start off with this. What's your personal brand? Now, it's a big question. Some people are saying, well, you know, well, personal brand is the way I look, the way I carry myself. And it's a lot of different things. But the most important thing is this. What do others say about you when you leave the room? Whatever they say is your brand. That's your job to set it up. So, they, so you know exactly what they're going to say about you. If it's not the same thing, then other people will make it up as they go along. And they're very good at it. So another question, is your name a verb? Because that's what an industry icon is ultimately all about. Can people use your name and find out exactly what it is that you do to get things done? Now, that sounds like a weird thing. Well, I'm a plumber or I'm, you know, I'm a carpenter or, or, or I'm a life coach or whatever it is. But it really is important that they know that you are the person that they want. Otherwise, they just go for cheaper. So, for instance, can strangers Google you and predict with the impact that you will have on their business because it shows up? If the answer is no, then why should they work with you? And that is a hard question, but it's a realistic question. And it's exactly what clients are thinking of when you're wondering why the calls aren't coming in. That's what they're thinking. Let me show you an example. As we, go, we look at artificial intelligence, and I won't go too deep into it because you can turn into a geek and your head explodes. I want to talk about the human side of what it is that we're discussing. So if you put your name in to chat GPT, what does it say? Does it give you a response? It's found you? Well, when you're looking at LinkedIn, which for many cases is, is the be all and end all, Lots of people have vanity metrics, have massive numbers and huge responses and comments. And I sometimes check out by putting them into chat GPT and seeing if they're really as big as they're trying to pretend they are. And some turn up, most don't. Now, why is that relevant? Because it doesn't matter how many people know who you are. It only matters how many people you, you affect, you help, and they start working with you. It's a different game than most people perceive it to be. So when that's being said, you're probably thinking, well, who's Dave Crane? What does he do? What's all that about? So very simply, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been in Dubai for 30 uh, plus years. Before that, you can see me looking very young with a man with big ears. That's King Charles, as we know, uh, Charlie. Um, sure. um, but that was me when I was working with the Prince's Trust. And um, I got uh, commendations from the work I was doing with the Prince's Trust 30 years ago. I didn't even think about this until I looked at my brand. And I looked at some old pictures and I thought, oh, I know that one. What, well, what can I use that for in my branding? I thought, well, it proves you've been doing this for 30 years because you look very innocent. And when was the last time I wore a green jacket? So with that, then I go on to do lots of other things. You'll have to tell me, Jill, whether this actually plays. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've hosted over a thousand events and there's nothing more exciting or nerve wracking than getting to introduce one of the best in the business. He's an award-winning international motivational speaker and coach. He's worked with celebrities like James Brown and Bruce Willis. And I'm Jack Campion. And I'm Brian Tracy. And I'm John Gray. I'm Jared Robin. And I'm Perry Marshall. And I'm George Green. To audiences of over 1 billion people. He's sharing how to become unstoppable in business. It's my honor to introduce to you Dave Crane. Now, to be on trained eye, it looks like I've just done a massive ego. But the reason I've got that video is I use it to go on stages and I use it when I'm doing stuff online because people don't generally introduce you very well. And the way that people train you, you train an audience or they train you. And people make a very quick decision whether they want to do business with you or not. 
And if you don't set it up the right way, it doesn't matter what you do, they're not interested. Now, the thing about artificial intelligence is not yet, but soon anybody will be able to say anything about anyone and prove it. You have to have proof that you have done stuff for a long period of time and you're very good at it. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you a little later on a question, which is what is your signature message? And this is mine. I mentor decision makers to go from invisible, ignored, and scared to speak in public to highly respected and branded industry experts by coaching them on how to jump and grow wings on the way down. So in an elevator, I could tell somebody that. I could use it on my LinkedIn as a post as well, and people would know exactly whether that resonates with them and they want to do business with me or not. I don't say, oh, this is what my job description says. It's not that, oh, I've done this and I've done that, and maybe I can do it for you. I tell them exactly what it does in the tin. And with a very short amount of time, I get yes or I get a no, and I'm happy to have a no because you don't get time back. So the question is, who are you? That's something I want you to think about, because if you're not already driving your brand, it's a really, really important question. Otherwise, artificial intelligence will just bypass you. And before you know it, you may not be able to position yourself as an expert in your industry because your industry is no looking for no longer looking for people to do a job. There'll always be room for experts. There'll always be room for artists in every industry. But you've got to make sure people know that you are one. So for many people in this call, then you are an entrepreneur and a typical entrepreneurial day looks like this. I'm excited. Oh, this is terrible. It's working. I messed up. Give up the good for the great. Oh, I'm going bankrupt. This is a typical day for many people. And you may resonate with this. And so I want to share with you why it's important that you do handle, first of all, imposter syndrome. So what I'm going to do is share with you how to get over imposter syndrome. I'm going to give you a couple of questions of my experiences, and then hopefully that will bring us to the end of our 20 minutes, half an hour or so of Dave talking too much. So imposter syndrome is that wanting to be that big thing. You're thinking, right, I'm a little cat, but I want to be a lion. And often it's the talk in your head, the self-talk that when you got when you're a small child, hijacks your ability to think that you're as good as you want to be. And everybody has this. 92% of people surveyed say they suffer from imposter syndrome in some way, shape or form. So I'm going to show you with you how to get over it. Now, here's the thing. When you're born, it's a lucky life lottery. You never know what you're going to get. For everybody, it could be a different location. It could be a different race. It could be you're rich or poor. It could be you've got connections or you don't know anybody. It could be you've got spiritual beliefs of some description. It could be the fact that you've got a different nationality. All these things, gender preference, your physicality, your traditions, and also your existing influence they vary from person to person. It's a roll of a dice when you wake up and you open your eyes and you become three or four years old, you start realizing when you look in the mirror what the mirror's for. And then you've got to work out who you are and where you go. You can't change certain things. You can change other things. And not everybody can get what other people can get. That's just a bottom line. But it's a race against you. So this session, if nothing else, I want to help you cr create or recreate yourself. What does that mean? Well, I want to first of all start off by helping you discover your superpower. And for anybody who's a fan of Marvel, like me, I'm a very old fart, but also I'm seeing all these Marvel movies and thinking, right, superheroes, about time too. Because before when you watch the old things, do you remember Spider-Man on TV? Probably didn't, I remember Batman on TV. Um, and it wasn't great, to be honest. So discovering your superpower is part of what I'm gonna show you today. So let's get into what that truly means. Three stages. First one, your birth certificate. When you're born, you're positioned as whatever your name is. For me, it was this. David Maxwell Crane. And if I go like this, then it looks like my head is on the baby. Can you see that? I look like it. It's Sorry, I, I get, it just makes me laugh. Okay, so there's my, my father and my mother, as you probably worked it out. And I look quite a lot like my dad, as you probably worked out too. And that, that pillow with a head in it was me. So my birth certificate says David Maxwell Crane. From birth, you've got to work out who your birth certificate person is. And then you go on to your next stage and social media speeds it up. Social media of you, which version, and as I'm looking at all the different names that I see in front of you, you've chosen a version of your name that you share with the outside world. Very few people put their full name down. Usually if you've got some kind of inferiority complex or if there's some kind of lord, then we usually put the full name down for recognition. But for everyone else, uh, me included, you just change it to the one that you want. So this is me. I'm now Dave Crane. 
And that's my wife and my kids. She's a bit older now. And that's who I am. I created Dave Crane out of David Maxwell Crane. That's the version that grew up. That's the one that did good stuff, bad stuff. That's the one that went on to do lots of really cool stuff around the world as an entertainer and uh, as, a, as a host and blah, 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 as a life coach, business coach and mentor. Now, here's a problem. After the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, before that, my job was to teach people how to speak and to host huge events like Dubai Rugby Sevens for, for, excuse me, for 20 years, I was hosting that. Um, and I've worked with Opening Planet Hollywood and all sorts of stuff like that, worked with major stars. But what happened was as soon as the pandemic was over, I realized that even though work was slowly coming back and I'd reinvented myself to not do brand, not do speaking, but to do branding, there was a part of me that was really suffering from burnout or even more difficult, a thing called burn in. If you don't know about burn in, it's like imagine being in a car and it's stuck in quicksand or stuck in normal sand and he's spinning the tires and it's not catching, but he's still spinning. That was me. And the world was coming back into norm and I wasn't ready to take it on. I thought as a, you might not know this, I'm actually a hypnotist as well. I've done, I've got, I've actually just been asked by the QE2 to put my residency on the, on the QE2 as a, as a stage hypnosis show, which I'm not sure I'm going to take. I probably will just for the fun of it, but I don't do hypnosis very often. But the point is that um, I realized that the version of me that was going to take on the world isn't ready yet. So how did I fix that? I thought, well, why don't you dig in deep and work out how to find a solution? And the solution was to come up with a power name. So, you know, when you work really hard and you do something really well and you think, just leave it with me, I've got this. For me, that's when I've got a microphone in front of an audience. Give me an audience and I work super smart, super fast while engaging people in about 10 different plates, all spinning at the same time. I know what the sponsors want. I know what the event has to be. I know what I've got to deliver. If there's a challenge in the middle of it, I'll act very quickly and deal with it. Now, my power name, I thought I'll give him a name and call him Max, my middle name. So here's what I did. When I'm with a microphone, I'm really good at doing stuff. When I'm Dave Crane, I'm kind of scared sometimes because I'm a family man and I was really worried about post pandemic and I was burnt out and everything. So I decided, why don't I let Max handle everything? When everything comes up that's difficult, I don't know how to deal with clients that aren't getting back to me. I'll ask Max and don't get me wrong. I know Max is just made up in my head, but that's not the point. I'll ask Max, what would he think? And so when I asked my, Max about, you know, I've got a client who hasn't responded to me and I really want to close them. Max said to me, well, tell them we've got 24 hours of the deals off. I thought, you can't do that. If you do that, you might lose them. But I went, okay, I'll do it. I gave him 24 hours and the deal was off and they never came back to me, but I didn't waste any more time. And I found in the future when I did that, I did get a clarity and answers and less time wasting. But the deal was with Max, I had to go with whatever it was he said. Otherwise, I'll burn him out and I'll never be able to ask myself questions like that. For anybody who's worked inside the mind, you'll understand what it is that I'm talking about. So then I decided to hand over more to Max. The only thing Max doesn't do now is be dad and husband in the house. When it comes to business, when it comes to doing this, it's Max. Now, you might be thinking, what? But Dave, it's you. Exactly. Only I know that I'm turning on a different side of me to look after decisions. And it's really refreshing. And it means that people don't give you loads of crap you don't have to deal with. And it's not new. Think about it. All the James Bond movies, they reinvent James Bond for a new era, new adventures. Why can't you? Why don't you find a new version of you starting today, a view at the very best of who you are, and just say, well, what should I do next? And that's what you take to market and that's what you work on. So I'm gonna give you very three very quick examples before I finish today and tell you how you can work with me directly after this. So a road test for you. I'd love to have your answers coming up inside the chat. So ask yourself, what would you do in each of these situations? I've got three case studies. Case study one is all about this. Have you ever looked in the mirror and wished others could see the potential that you have? Because you can and nobody else can. I can see people nodding because certainly that's the case for me. Yes? No? A few no's? Really? Okay. Never wished it or just never seen it? Well, I have. I have most of my life having to prove to people who I am because they just don't believe it or they don't want to get somebody else safer or whatever. Well, let's take an example. Are you being unrealistic about yourself? Let me show you an example of what I mean. So this is unrealistic for me. 
That's me about the age of 15, 16. And my daughter saw that picture and said, Dad, is that you graduating from university? No, darling, that was my hair. At the time, I thought it was cool. Clearly, years later, you're going, what were you thinking? But anyway, that was me. And I was trying to be cool. And I was hoping that someday being individual would catch on. I was growing up in Redcar, which is near Middlesbrough in the northeast of England. And there weren't any black people, let alone people with hair like that. I was trying to be individual, trying to stand out. And uh, it didn't seem to work. But years later, I end up interviewing James Brown in Dubai. And James Brown didn't turn around and say, you're not very good at what you do. Welcome to the Emirates, Mr. Brown. Thank you very, very much. I'm very glad to be here. And I, I know it's going to be fantastic. What can we look forward to seeing on stage? Believe it or not, we're all... I won't play the whole thing, but I'll, I'll leave it available. So it should be online, by the way. You should be able to find that. So that's first question for you is life lesson. What do you get from that when you feel that you, you, you nobody respects you in the mirror? You want to be able to step up. Everyone says it's real unrealistic. What was the life lesson that I got from that? And what do you take from it? Put it into the chat so I can see. Experience is not. What else do we have? What would you take and grasp onto? Ignore them and do it anyway. I love that. That's absolutely true. I've got one minute to wrap it up. That's what I've been told. That's the life lesson I've got. Okay, with that then, I'm going to move forward slightly and share with you something about how we can work together. The, qu the answer to that question, by the way, is this. You are enough. You are enough to be able to achieve whatever it is you want to do. Let me share with you then what happens. Because it's really important you know this. It's not about what happens to you. It's about what you do next. With that in mind, what I did next from the, from the pandemic, from, from losing loved ones, is I decided to create Industry Icon Program where I help people as a global community like this to be able to build their brand and be the best at what they do. Very simple. When you wake up to who you are, you become aware that you're not where you want to be. You start driving a certain direction. You reposition, you refine, and then you start owning your name as a verb. So how do you monetize your brand? Well, when you've built it up, there's loads of different ways. Creating tribes, podcasts, writing books, doing sales coaching, doing masterminds, mentoring, all these different things. This is what I show people how to do all around the world. Now, what I want to share with you as I finish off today is I've got a beta group starting in about a week or so's time. And that's Industry Icon for the first time as a group coaching program. We're starting off for the first three months. It's a year program, helping people to overcome imposter syndrome, helping them build a personal brand, and also help them create content that converts. Because if you tell people who you are and they don't have an interest in it, and you don't really know who you are, then it's going to be very challenging, challenging to be able to get anybody to interact with you. So with that, it's very simple. We've got 10 spaces left. I'll help you to write your book or choose your podcast, create membership sites, become an international keynote speaker, or produce many income streams. All you have to do is that link below, go to that, apply to join, send me an email of who you are, and if we decide to work with you, then we'll change your life. Now, it seems like a sales pitch, but here's the thing about it. It's not really because I do help people around the world. And if you don't do this, I don't it's fine. You've got a free gift out of me anyway. But let me share with you one final thought. Watch your thoughts because they become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions because they become a habit. And then watch your habits because they become your character. And then your character becomes your destiny. So whatever you're thinking in your head is what turns out to be the version of you that makes a difference in the future. And that's what you have to think about. I'm open to questions, as always. But meanwhile, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure sharing quality time and ideas with you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dave. It's fantastic. Thank you. Um, we won't do...